Welcome back to one of the Bears Profit Plays YouTube channel. Today is Saturday, September 14th, and I'm back breaking down a few more plays in the MLB. We're going to start with the Dodgers going up against the Braves with the first play of the day, and then for the best play of the day, we have that match between the Phillies and the Mets one more time. Four more player props, two best player props being towards the end of the video. Hope everybody enjoys their Saturday, and let's break down some ball. All right, guys, here's that recap from Friday night. So far, so good. Yankees first five miles a half. 0-0, zero, zero. final score after five innings, Aaron Judge, I really thought, no, it was Juan Soto on the bottom of the fifth, two outs, struck out. I was really hoping Aaron Judge would get up, hit a home run. That would really be uh, awesome since I called a home run for Aaron Judge uh, last night. But DJ Harris got it done against Miami, only allowed one run. If you give me five innings, one run, five Ks, every single start, DJ Harris, I will take that for the Nats. Ian Happ has a single right now in two at-bats going up against the Rockies. Hopefully that one does hit, have a pretty good day here. Mets money line. Killing the Phillies right now, 10-1. to 1. Francisco Lindor, single and a double so far. And then Aaron Judge, he hit a grand slam left field in the seventh inning. Hit the home run. Paw Patrol curse is over. So we did good there. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. I one of the game pick. One on the player prop. Let's try to get the sweep on a beautiful Saturday. For the first play today, we're going to look at the Dodgers going up against the Braves. The Mets, they keep on winning games. And that means the Braves have to keep on winning games and both of these teams are going to be going through tough opponents, the Dodgers and the Phillies. The Braves, they were able to take care of business, I believe, against the Dodgers on Friday night. I think it was 5-1 to one last time I checked. But in this game, we're going to take the under because we have a guy that the Dodgers went out and got the trade deadline to help them in the postseason. And the other guy is the NL Cy Young winner. I don't want to hear anybody say that Chris Sale does not deserve the Cy Young this season. He's been incredible for the Atlanta Braves for the last several months, especially towards the back end of the season. The play is the under eight runs. We're going to start with the Cy Young winner for the NL, Chris Sale. He's now gone back-to-back -back games, going six-plus innings, giving up no runs in both those games. If we go back a little bit further, since July 14th, Chris Sale has not given up more than two runs in 10 consecutive games, going six-plus innings in eight of those 10 games. He's had an ERA between two and three for the majority of the season, now sitting at 2.38 with a flat one whip, and this will make 17 wins for his team and three losses if he finds a way to pull off the win here. This is without a doubt one of the best pitchers in baseball this season, and it's good to see because coming over from the Red Sox, I kind of thought his career was done, but that slider, it is back and it is moving this season for the Dodgers. They went and got Jack Flaherty from the Tigers. He's been decent since coming over to this team. He's really settled himself down over the last two games. He's now coming in with a 2.61 ERA, 1.16 whip, and he does have five wins to one loss. Just like Chris Sale, he has gone back-to-back -back games, shutting everybody down, and he's gone up against the Guardians and the Dimebacks. Those are really two good teams, only giving up one total run. The Braves are putting up some runs on Friday night, but I don't think that we're going to see a lot of runs in this game. I really like both these arms. I'm going to take the under eight runs scored here. For the player prop on the screen, I really don't want to take anybody, and I put somebody on the graphic play at the end. I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, the player I put on there was Mookie Betts because left on right matchup. If anybody's going to get hit, probably Mookie Betts. If you remember all the breakdowns of Otani going up against left-handed pitching, it's normally just singles. I just don't really like anybody here. If I were to give a play, it'd be Mookie Betts. I think I'm just going to take it off. Uh, so no play for me on this game for the graphic plays. But if you're looking for plays, Mookie Betts, he's pretty good against the slider. He's not bad against the changeup. So Mookie Betts would be the one I would go for. But let's take a look at the best play of the day. And this should have been the best play of the day yesterday. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, we're looking at the Mets going up against the Phillies once again. If you're a Mets fan right now, you might be a little bit worried that you're playing too well right now and you're going to die down come postseason time, but you did have to make a really big run to get here. I'm going to take them here again on the money line as the play. They dominated the Phillies on Friday night. It took a little bit more time to get some runs up on the board. I think they started scoring in the fourth or fifth inning, but at least they started pouring on the runs, and boy, did they. 10-plus runs again. We have Luis Severino on the mound for the Mets. He's been really, really good over the last couple games. And then we have Colby Allard on the mound for the Phillies, starting with Severino. He's given up one run or less in four of the last five games that we've seen him in. And just like Jose Quintana, some of these starting pitchers are starting to step up towards the end of the season. Luis Severino has now given up just one run to the Padres, Red Sox, and Reds in three of the last four games. And then he shut down the Marlins in a complete game as well. He's now coming in with a 3.74 ERA and a 1.25 whip. And he's only had one bad game against the Dimebacks. And everybody kind of struggles against the Dimebacks anyway. But the other side, it's going to be Colby Allard. He's just now starting the season. He's only been in four total games, making his first start on July 28th. He's been giving up a lot of hits, though, in the first four starts. Six-plus hits in three of the last four, only giving up seven runs, though. But again, going up against the Mets here, they've been putting up a lot of runs over the last couple months. If he gives up six-plus hits to this team, he's going to give up a lot of runs. He's coming in with a 3.50 ERA, 1.33 whip. I'm going to trust anybody in this game. It's going to be the Mets bats. Give me the Mets here. Once again, on the money line as the play for the player prop on the screen, Francisco Lindor, over 1.5 bases once again. This is one of the hottest hitters in baseball right now. He's talked about as the MVP. 
He came through for us on Friday night, single and a double. I think he can do the exact same thing here going up against Allard. Lindor, he just came off that 40-plus on-base streak. He's starting himself a new one over the last couple games. I really like him to at least have an extra base hit in this one, especially going up against a guy who's given up six-plus hits in three of the last four games. Typically with this team, if Lindor has a good game, the team has a good game. So hopefully we can get both here. 1.5 bases for Lindor. Mets on the money line as the best play of the day. For the best batting props of the day, it is not deja vu. I'm going back to Ian Happ of the Cubs to go over 1.5 base against the Rockies. He's getting that matchup going up against Austin Gomer on Friday night. Currently, he's had two at-bats, one walk, and one single. Hopefully, he can get one more hit in that game. I'm going to take him in this one as well in the exact same matchup, basically going up against Kyle Freeland. The only difference in this game is that we're going to get the sinker, and that's going to be thrown the majority of the time in this game out of Kyle Freeland, and that's the best pitch that Ian Happ's hit on the season. Kyle Freeland, he had that injury at the beginning of the season. He came back. He was a lot better in the first couple games. But over the last several games, he kind of slipped back to his normal self, what we saw at the beginning of the season. He's giving up way too many hits. He's giving up way too many runs. And that's just on par for what the Rockies have been producing this season. I feel very bad for the position players because they're really not that bad of a team. They have bad starting pitching. They have a horrible bullpen, one of the worst that we've seen probably over the last several years in baseball. But I really guess I can call them a bad – I mean, I can't call them a bad team. They just have bad pitching. Uh, in this game, though, Ian App going up against that sinker, 343 batting average, over a 600 slug percentage. He's also getting that fastball again, 296 batting average, slug percentage over 500. He should have no problem in this game in the leadoff spot getting a couple base hits, over 1.5 bases as the play there. For the pitching prop tonight, we're going to be looking at Chris Sale, and I've already talked about him a little bit, so this is going to be a shorter breakdown. I just can't get enough of Chris Sale this season. Watch him pitch, and I hope that he doesn't have a poor game in this one. I could be cursing him, but watch him pitch in this game. He's not had a bad game over the last 10 starts. Since the start of July, he's been the best pitcher in baseball. Everything he does is surgical. He has the best slider that we've maybe ever seen. It's up there with the best of them. In this game, he's going to get a tough matchup going up against the Dodgers. They're a pretty good hitting team against left-handed pitching. They hit the ball at 265 batting average this season. That makes them the third best team in baseball. The problem with the Dodgers is once you get past Mookie Betts and Otani, there are not a lot of players on this team that can handle that slider. The majority of these guys have a negative run value going up against that pitch, and a lot of them have a less than 230 batting average going up against that pitch. That is the pitch for Chris Sale. He sets everything up with that pitch. You get a fastball high and tight. You get that slider, then he's going to make you swing and a change up in the dirt. I do think this is going to be under 1.5 runs because, again, he hasn't given up over two runs in 10 consecutive games. So this is probably going to be under 1.5 runs. But with the Dodgers here, we might get that opportunity for 2.5 runs. But I'm going to take him here under 2.5 runs, play it to under 1.5 runs, as the play, let's go over to the recap graphic. We're going to be looking at the Dodge and the Braves under eight runs in that game. Francisco Lindor over 1.5 base. We're not going to take Mookie Betts. I do like Mookie Betts, but we're not going to take him. Mets on the money line against the Phillies. Ian Happ over 1.5 bases against the Rockies. And then Chris Sale under 2.5 runs, under 1.5 runs, possibly as the play there. God's going to do it for the MLB picks and props for Saturday, September 14th, slated games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please sure to drop like in this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video and thanks for watching.